Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me today on this lovely Sunday morning. Good morning to all of our catechists and other children and youth that might be watching along at home as well. So I'm here today because today is a very special day. Today kicks off a whole new season of our church year. Do you know what that is? If you are participating in any of the virtual classroom stuff, you might have watched Mrs. Julia and Mrs. Stephanie uh, in some other videos, and they might have told you about what today is. That's right. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, and it is one of my favorite seasons of the church year. And you might have talked about with them before about what makes the season of Advent so special. And Advent, as a reminder, is a season of waiting and slowing down and preparing ourselves for Christmas and when and for the birth of Jesus. And we have some time. Uh, maybe you have an advent calendar at home and you're opening the uh, little uh, boxes each day leading up to Christmas. But yeah, so there are a lot of different ways to celebrate the season of advent and to be and to slow down and to be mindful and to just kind of think about the season and prepare ourselves for Christmas. But I bet you didn't know that there is a color that's associated with the season of Advent. Do you know what it is? I hope you do, because I can't think of it. Yeah, I don't know. I have this collection of stuff that I've kind of found too, so maybe you can help me figure out what the color is. Uh, well, I have my purple comb here, and uh, yeah, that didn't help me think of anything. Oh, I have my purple uh, t-shirt here. But, uh, yeah, I got that. Oh, I got my purple paint. Can't go anywhere without purple paint. That's important. Uh, oh, I have my purple cookies, too. But, uh, yeah, I have this purple wall behind me. I don't know. Wait a minute. Duh. The season of Advent is celebrated by the color purple. God, why didn't I think of that? You're very smart. Well, yeah. So the season of Advent uh, is associated with the color purple. And the color purple is sometimes associated with royalty. Now, why do we think that we would have a royal color be a season of waiting? I don't know. Maybe it could be a season of, or a color that's helping us remember that we're preparing for royalty to come into our lives and for Jesus to come into our lives. I don't know, maybe you can pause the video and tell your parents what you think the color purple means or why the color purple is special to you. Well, in the meantime, I have a book to share with you. And it's called, The World Needs More Purple People. What do you think this is about? I don't know, I see some kids on it. I see a purple world. Let's figure it out. The World Needs More Purple People by Kristen Bell and Benjamin Hart. Hey kid, I've got a secret. It's gonna knock your socks off and I can't wait to share it with you. I think that's gonna be our little guide through this book. The book is also illustrated by Daniel Wiseman. The world needs more purple people. Ta-da! Follow my guide to become a purple person. How to be a purple person by Penny. Now, you may be asking yourself, why in the whole wide world would I want to be purple? And there's Penny. Purple is a magic color made when red and blue work together. I think all the best things in the world are purple. But you're probably wondering, what does that have to do with people? Wow, are you a genius? Because you're already on your way to becoming a purple person. You wanna know why? And there's Penny, and we have our red dragon, and our blue knight, and our purple penny rolling around. It 
Step one, ask really great questions. My dad says purple people ask great questions, questions about everything, even questions about questions. Hey dad, how far away is outer space? Have you ever met a dolphin? How many dolphins live in outer space? Those are all pretty good questions. What do you think the answer is? Purple questions are the kind that help you learn something really big about the world or something really small about another person. How tall is the world's tallest rainbow? What's your bear's name? Charlie. Dad says the more purple questions you ask, the more purple you become. How many stars do you think there are? He also says I can only ask him 20 questions about space dolphins per day. That's fair. Step two, laugh a lot. My grandma says purple people laugh a lot. We are always laughing together. I mean, snot out our nose laughing. That is a lot of snot coming out of their nose. What do you think they're laughing at? We laugh at books. We laugh at jokes. How do you make a tissue dance? Put a little boogie in it. We laugh at donkey dances and hairy elephant knees. And we especially laugh at grandpa's funny noises. Hee haw. <laughs> Those are a lot of funny, goofy noises, aren't they? Purple laughing helps us remember the things that we share and forget what we thought made us different. And it's almost impossible to be angry when you're laughing. Try it. I dare you. Grandma says the more purple laughing you do, the more purple you become. She also says grandpa's noises are her favorite funny noises in the whole wide world. Look at all those kids laughing and having fun together. It is pretty hard to be mad when you're laughing. Step three, use your voice and don't lose your voice. My mom says purple people use their voice and don't lose their voice. She encourages me to use my voice to sing. My dad is the one with the hairy chest who loves me more than all the rest. To give good ideas, let's wear a monster costume to school and to share my opinions. I personally feel like we shouldn't have to eat Brussels sprouts because they smell like sweaty socks. I personally like Brussels sprouts, but that's just me. Sometimes people lose their voice and that's okay, it happens. A purple voice helps someone who is having trouble finding their own voice. Purple people don't just speak up, they also listen. Maybe you could tell them you don't like it when they call you that name. Want me to help you tell them? Mom says the more you use your a purple voice, the more purple you become. Mom, can you help me with my play? She also heard my opinion on Brussels sprouts but I still have to eat them. I'm gonna work on a better argument. Step four, work hard, super duper hard. My grandpa says purple people know how to dig in and get stuff done. He and I like to work hard while we build things and while we learn things and while we grow things.
purple work is the kind of work that is done together to change something that needs changing. What do we want? More playgrounds. When do we want them? Now. Purple work helps us fix something that needs fixing or help someone who needs helping. What kind of purple work do you do? Grandpa says that the more purple work you do, the more purple you become. He also says no purple work has ever been done while sitting on your backside sipping strawberry lemonade. It's pretty smart right there. Okay. Are you ready for the last step? Are you ready? Okay. Are you sure? Okay. Are you sure you're sure? Okay. Are you really, 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 really ready? Okay. Drum roll, please. Step five, paint yourself purple. That is a lot of purple paint everywhere. That looks a little messy. That's a lot of purple work to clean up all that purple paint. No, well. Oh, just kidding. That's not the way to become a purple person. Actually, being a purple person has nothing to do with what you look like. My teacher says purple people look all sorts of ways. They're big and small, old and young. Some wear cool coats, some wear shorts with lots of pockets, and some wear funny hats. She says some purple people feel blue sometimes and red other times. And some purple people even have green hair. And look at that. All of those purple people, tall and short, old and young, some with cool hats and cool coats. So many different colors. Step five. Just be the real you. Like my teacher always says, purple people come in every color you can dream up and every size you can think up. The only way to be purple is to just be you because you are the only you we've got. And look at all those amazing purple people. We've got super tall people, astronauts, dancers, Penny's teacher, all these incredible, per, cre incredibly important purple people. Whew, that is a lot of peas. So those are my surefire steps to turning into a purple purse. Hey, wait a minute. You ask really great questions. You laugh a lot. You use your voice all the time. You're a really hard worker. And you are totally you. Well, I'll be a llama's mama. You have been beautifully purple this whole time. I'm sure glad you are a purple person because the world needs more purple people just like you. The end. And look at all these incredibly purple people. And I think they're doing all of the steps. They're laughing, they're working hard. The end. So I hope that during this season of Advent, this season of waiting and being patient and preparing ourselves, that you take the time to uh, be patient and think about how you can be more of a purple person each and every day. Some days you might not feel like being a purple person, and that's okay, but you can always work harder to become more of a purple person. And you can do that by helping others, by listening to others, by laughing a lot and making other people laugh, and doing all the incredibly important things that were in this book most importantly, 
by being you because you're the only person that you're the only you that we've got. So I hope you have a great day and a safe advent and I'll see you next time. Bye.